G'day. Welcome to Chuck Chases the Facts, where we look at strange things on the internet and YouTube. Today, we are actually going to look at some facts. I've sort of had a fascination with the meaning of phrases over the years, and I've rushed off to do some research to find the original meanings of those phrases, often resulting in this. Do you see the light? What light? Have you seen the light? Yes! Yes! Jesus H. God dancing Christ! I have seen the light! This type of phrase is called an idiom. One such idiom is over the moon. To mean excited, very happy, ecstatic, delighted. But where did it come from? This particular idiom first appeared in a book written by Charles Malloy called The English Chevalier in 1718. And I quote, "'Tis he, I know him well. I shall jump over the moon for joy. But the phrase is actually attributed to the children's nursery rhyme, Hey Diddle Diddle, which of course we all know, and some of you are now running it through your head. But it is best illustrated by Denslow in 1765, where he depicts the image of the moon setting in the west, the cat on the fiddle playing his tune, the cow, sorry, the dog watching the cow, and the cow leaping in the field. But where the cow is leaping, he appears to be jumping over the moon that is in the background, setting in the west. Hence, the dog laughs to see such fun. The rest, they say, is history. That was our first idiom. It was meant to be an example, but it has actually turned into our first idiom. For our second idiom, I sent Chuck out into the field with a rather complex one. Chuck, what have you got for us? Thanks, Chuck. Yes, you are right. The whole nine yards. Immediately, we think of the 2000 film starring Bruce Willis with hair, very young Matthew Perry, the ever beautiful Rosanna Arquette, and the star of the film The Green Mile, Michael Clark Duncan. But where did the phrase come from? Researchers have confessed that this is one of the most difficult idioms to pinpoint the correct meaning of. In May of 1907, an article appeared in the Mitchell Commercial, which was a newspaper in a small town of Mitchell in Indiana, about an upcoming baseball game. It read, and I quote, This afternoon at 2.30 will be one of the baseball games that will be worth going a long way to see. The regular nine is going to play the businessmen as many innings as they can stand, but we cannot promise the full nine yards. End quote. Now it is not clear if that was a typo or the use of the word yard relates to an innings but the paper did go on to use the exact same phrase three times over the next seven years and each story related to big events such as someone having to tell the big story and that everything was resolved so where did it come from it came from a news article written in january of 1855 in the new albany Daily Ledger, New Albany, Indiana, called the judge's big shirt. And again, I quote from the last paragraph, What a silly, stupid woman. I told her to get just enough to make three shirts. Instead of making three, she has cut the whole nine yards into one shirt. So, this indicates that the seamstress used the whole nine yards of fabric to make just one shirt 
instead of making three. Hence, the use of the whole nine yards became enormous. Chuck, back to you. Our next idiom is one that for years I believed was an insult from the Americans to the British. Turns out to be quite a compliment. In the early days of British exploration to the Americas, British sailors used to eat limes to avoid the crippling and often deadly disease of scurvy. And so it meant a term of endearment, which in a similar way, I also thought that yank was an insult from a British to an American. These days, the word yank is used by British, uh, Australians, uh, Kiwis, um, pretty much anybody that isn't American as a yank. But where did it come from? Well, it came from the people from the South Confederate to describe people from the North, uh, the Yankees. Since then it has been shortened to Yank. And once again, it is actually a term of endearment that goes back the other way across the Atlantic to the Americans. Our last idiom for this particular video is thanks to Claire from Birmingham in England. And knowing Claire very well, I wasn't surprised when she asked me for the origins of no shit Sherlock. Everyone knows it. Everybody uses it. It is actually a sort of complicated idiom to find the information and send a report back. Chuck, what have you got for us? Yeah, thanks Chuck. Uh, obviously there's two meanings or two sections to this um, idiom. The first one is uh, finding the meaning to the word shit. Uh, it actually means to fall or to try to fall someone, pull their leg or con them into believing so something false or unusual. So back in the 50s, there would be something like, um, I don't know, the big bopper is playing down at the local pub tonight. And the answer would be, are you shitting me? Um, hence, are you misleading me? Then we go into the 60s, where the phrase no shit was uh, commonly observed, where it's believed that they're trying to tell them some news that's already known, um, that the other party really should have known that the news was real or true. And then of course we come into Sherlock. Sherlock is the master of solving a mystery that is unsolvable, that he is able to answer an unanswerable question. And people would say, good, good job Sherlock, well done. So when you add the two together, you get someone that should have known the truth discovered by someone who discovers the truth. Hence you get no shit Sherlock. You've answered the question that's already been answered. Back to you in the studio, Chuck. Well, that's it for this video. A little bit different, but there are definitely more interviews to come. If you did like the video, please like, share, subscribe, click the bell. If you do have any uh, idioms, phrases that you can't be asked to research yourself, pop them in the comment section below. I'll be happy to do the research and I'll give you a shout out on the next video. If you have any more comments in general, pop them in the comment section below. Most of you know by now that I am more than happy to reply personally to all comments. 
So just a couple of milestones to mention, thanks to TubeBuddy. Uh, we are on 177 subscribers, so we hit the 170 milestone. Uh, we did hit the 2,000 views milestone, and then five days later, we hit the 2,500 views milestone. So once again, thanks guys. Thank you so much. You, you don't know how much I appreciate since I started this channel. I really, really, really appreciate it. I would also like to source your opinion on creating a Patreon account. I do feel as though I need a little bit of help now to keep the channel running, but I would like your opinion if I am providing enough entertainment that I would deserve such a privilege as to have contributions to a Patreon account. Pop your comments below, please let me know. Once again, thank you for watching, thank you for your support, and good day.